I'd like to begin by asking you a question, which is why should we control lighting? Both Christian and Matt have given us wonderful glimpses of the future where all kinds of exciting things happen. But right now, the fact is that 97% of lighting in the world isn't controlled. So we may have all this wonderful technology, but competition is the light switch. I'm going to give you a few reasons why we would want to control lighting to make it really easy and memorable. The first three all begin with a letter C. The first one is conservation. As I've been driving around Delhi, it's been fascinating to see lots of posters showing your ecological awareness and your green credentials. The first C for why we should control our lighting is conservation. And we've got some really good news there. There's a massive, massive saving that we can make if we automate our lighting, if we turn our lighting uh, on and off automatically, if we dim it down or if we switch it off when people aren't there, or we make use of all the light that's available from the sunlight. And wow, you've got a lot of that over here, haven't you? Let's make use of that, harvest that daylight, dim our lighting down, and then we'll be more efficient. That leads to my second C, which is cost saving. Lighting controls are a wonderful technology because they pay for themselves. Essentially, over a period of maybe two, two and a half years, they become free. So uh, uh, lighting controls allow us to control our cost. The third C is compliance. Bit of a dull topic, but there's lots and lots of legislation coming in saying not only will we save money, not only will we save the planet, but we have to do it anyway. The law says we must control our lighting. There are other reasons, of course, why we control lighting, and many of you as architects are, are people people. You think about what makes people feel comfortable. You think about how people use spaces. And lighting a space in a dynamic way, in a way where the lighting isn't simply static, but in a way that's changing, actually enhances our well-being, it enhances our safety. But of course, controlling our lighting also brings life to our projects. It allows that dynamism, it allows those changes of mood and scene which bring your buildings as architects to life. We can add theatricality, we can add drama, and we can make the things that we are lighting appear very special. We can, in a retail context perhaps, or in a museum context, we can light our products as if they were works of art. And not just in museums, but in the retail space. You've seen some wonderful pictures already um, uh, from, uh, from Matt uh, about the, the Mazda project that's going on. We're lighting these very desirable motors as if they're works of art. So the applications of controls are, are very wide and varied. We can change colors, we can save the world, we can dim down, create moods and atmospheres. And we can react to people in the space where we are, whether that's people moving around, whether it's people's schedules, or whether it's the abundant daylight that's flooding into our buildings that we can harvest to make our systems more efficient. Now, it's thought that controls are a bit of a dark art. There's something complicated. There's all kinds of protocols involved. But I'd like to say, instead, we should focus on the behavior of people, because people are the, are the, uh, the primary reason we're lighting a space. Perhaps um, one of our behaviors is time-based. We know when there are going to be people in a space, and we know when there aren't. So for example, taking this car showroom, uh, during the daytime, it might be nice and brightly lit, but at night, Many showrooms all over the world are just burning energy. There's lots of light all the time, 24-7. Actually, we can make a much more interesting scheme if we dim down. We can make our cars look really interesting. We can uh, highlight the product, uh, and we can do that whilst saving energy. One of the wonderful things that Havel Sylvania does uh, is it provides this full solution. And I'd like to show you a very quick um, video clip of one of our customers talking about his experience uh, with the product. company in uh, Leiden, uh, we have got uh, 40 uh, people that work at our company. This year we, uh, we uh, exist 40 years. 
And uh, yeah, we do all kinds of installation, electrical installations. Uh, installation was not very difficult. Okay, it was quite easy. Uh, uh, the, the products are good. I never seen such beautiful uh, uh, lights. I like it very much, and I think uh, the Motorhouse Group, uh, Marqueur, will like it also very much. It's very nice to with, uh, work with this uh, material. It's very good. It's very nice. Yeah, what I tell you, it is very nice. It's really easy. I have never had such good support uh, in this in this country, but uh, Sylvania, they do it very well by, by mail and also here. I like it very much. Beautiful product, easy to install, excellently supported. That's uh, the way we like to treat our customers and their customers, the end customers uh, on the projects. Now, what are these acronyms up on the screen? FOH versus BOH, what's, what's that all about? Thinking about our buildings, they often fall into two areas. There's the front of house area and there's the back of house area. And we mustn't ever limit ourselves to just thinking about one part of the building when we control it. Instead, we could say, well, there are going to be certain parts of the building that are rarely visited. I've not seen anybody go through that door this evening. On the other side, let's hope there's a motion sensor so that when there are no people there, we can very simply switch the lighting off. So controls can be very simple through to uh, very useful and very uh, entertaining. But it's all about enhancing the occupant's experience of the space. I mentioned earlier that control is often seen as a little bit of a, a dark art. And there's numerous methods of control, from simply switching them on and off, to dimming, to a whole panoply of low voltage control techniques. I'm not going to tell you how they all work. I'd love to, but I've been told I mustn't speak for more than two hours this evening. Uh, and, so, uh, <laughs> uh, and so let me tell you about the way we deal with controls. Our control strategy is this. We focus on the users of the space. They're the people that matter. And we want to make sure that our products are really easy to deploy. That's absolutely vital. Because if they're easy, you'll have a good experience and you'll come back and we'll have a long and very fruitful relationship with you. So I'm going to talk about two technologies that we have and give you a little insight into both of them. And uh, in that way, explain the fresh thinking that Havel Sylvania is bringing to lighting controls. The first is a brand new way of powering LEDs. As Christian mentioned at the beginning, we live in this wonderful, glorious world of LEDs, which bring to us so much promise. They bring the promise of long life, whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50,000 hours, 100,000 hours, million years. However long it is, we've got long life in our uh, LEDs these days. We're also promising high efficiency. I remember not very long ago, that 100 lumens per watt was seen as this magical, mythical figure that we'd never reach. And now that's, that's history from, from long ago. So we've got high efficiency coming out of our products. Um, LEDs offer, offer this wonderful promise of reduced maintenance. All of these things are true. All of these things are excellent. All these things will make our lives as lighting people and lighting customers a lot easier. We must, uh, however, always consider the reality when we take a whole system view. And by the whole system view, I mean from the place where the line voltage comes into the fixture to the place where the light comes out of it. And if we take that whole system view, then some lesser brands of LED drivers don't live up to the promise of LEDs. And this is where Havel Sylvania is deploying some exciting, fresh thinking. Um, we've got alternatives that will um, that will not fail before 50,000 hours. We've got alternatives that are more efficient. We've got alternatives that are very rapid to install. I'm going to tell you about one of them now, and that's something called inductive coupling. Quick show of hands. Has anybody here ever heard of inductive coupling? All of my colleagues have. That's excellent news. Thank you, ladies and gents. Um, for those that haven't, it's nothing new. Um, if you've got an electric rechargeable toothbrush, you've heard of inductive coupling when you 
pop it on the stand at night to charge up. You're not making an electrical contact. And we've taken that concept and partnered with a very intelligent uh, Cambridge startup company to bring you this. Look at how fast this installs. Um, we, uh, we watch four downlights being installed in a period of just 30 seconds. It happens live. They light up whilst it's going on. So it becomes super easy to install. Very rapid. Look at that. We're only four seconds in. Our first downlight has been installed. The next one takes a few more seconds. And by the time we reach 30 seconds, uh, we've, we've got four downlights installed, working, powered, and it's hugely efficient. What we've done is we've taken the drivers away and replace them with things called inductive couplers. It's technology that Havel Sylvania is exclusively bringing to you. They sit in a system that has a bulk power converter at one end and takes a constant current loop around the building. But what does this mean? Why is this good news? Well, it's good news for benefits. Uh, it's good news um, with benefits for specifiers and designers. It's good news for installers. You've seen how swift it is. And it's good news for those that pay the bills in a building at the end of the day. For the installers, I was talking to a chap recently who does uh, fast food outlets on the secure side of airports. And his challenge uh, is that he doesn't have very much time of an evening to make that installation. So this system talks right to his needs and it uh, allows very rapid uh, installation. He can also do it without tools, which are um, hard to, uh, to get through. Uh, security. For the system designers, the system is really easy to use. There are very simple components. They come with the fixtures uh, from uh, Havel Sylvania. And a designer doesn't have to think about lots of complicated questions when he's designing a system. He just has to think about how many fixtures he's got and what space he's going to put them in. It's radical thinking like that, making it really simple, that is enabling us to give marvelous value to our customers cheaper solutions than, or less expensive solutions than uh, traditional uh, methods. And for the building owners, as I mentioned earlier, the R1C, conservation, it's all about efficiency. Um, whereas a driver would typically, for an average one, be something like 70%, or for the market leading ones would be 87%. We're seeing efficiencies with this system of 97%. In real terms, what does that mean? It means when we take a 600 by 600 modular fitting that would nominally run at 48 watts on a circuit, without any light reduction, we can run at just 42 watts. So we're making some very exciting energy savings there, whilst not having any compromise at all on our lighting. Long life, but we've already said that the LED chips promise long life. But when we take that whole system view, we can offer long life here uh, as well. And wonderfully smooth dimming. I don't know when the last time you went to a cinema was, but it's not important how bright it gets, it's really important how dim it gets. And so we're able to think about both ends of the spectrum there. So in summary, we can deliver the promise of LEDs, the whole promise, thinking about the whole story, with benefits for everybody in the chain. I'd like to give you, uh, it just in two minutes, a very quick uh, glimpse at another innovative, market-leading technology uh, that we have. And when I speak to groups of architects uh, and specifiers and designers like your good selves, I ask this question, what do you think about? when you think about lighting control? And I typically get two answers, and they're both points of pain. The first is that low voltage wiring is complicated, it's difficult, people struggle with it. And the second is that commissioning a lighting system often involves getting a boffin and locking them in a cupboard for a couple of nights and seeing if when you let them out, they've done what you wanted them to do. And, and often that's, that doesn't really work. What if we had a system that didn't require low voltage wiring? What if we had a system that didn't require commissioning? How much pain in the world could we take away with such a system? We have one. We have been delighted to uh, announce a technology called Organic Response. 
And uh, that involves putting very clever sensors directly into the fixtures. We're all about integration here. We're all about putting the highest technology possible right into the light fixtures so that they can do the work for us. The way organic response works is, well, ask me afterwards how it works. It's very, very clever. Uh, but uh, when you have somebody in a room, motion is detected. That person is detected. And wire wirelessly, but without radio, wirelessly, the information is shared between all the fixtures in the room. So that if somebody's here and the fixture sees them, the next fixture along knows that they're coming and is already lit before they get there. Similarly, the next fixture along knows that they're on the way and the space is already lit. It leads to wonderful occupant comfort. But the good news is it's all in the fixtures, so it's radically easy to install. And uh, here's an example. You've seen a picture of office light already uh, in Matt's presentation. Here's one with that discreet little sensor ready installed. Just uh, to finish off, going to give you a very quick glimpse of um, a system installed. Now, each of these fixtures has just had live neutral and earth connected to it. Nothing more, and it hasn't been commissioned. I think it's really clever how they do it, considering there's no extra wiring or no dialing control. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's really good. A lot better, um, quicker, faster, um, easy to lay in, half the time, by far. Where it allows you to have more control over the floor and you don't have people if you've got an office in a small area with six people in one area with six lights controlled by one PIR then that does what everyone wants it to do around the area but two people might want different things so this gives you the optional to change considering where you are. They're really good, good fittings to put in and I'd definitely like to use them again. Um, the system is infinitely flexible and yet it's really quick, halves the time he said, really quick to install. Then at the end he mentioned he'd love to use those fixtures again. So that's a quick glimpse into Sylvania thinking about controls. I trust that communicates to you our kind of vision, our kind of addressing points of pain uh, and solving them, making the whole system experience gloriously easy and one that you'll be keen to repeat. Very, very quick glimpse into the future. The, the cloud, big data, the internet of things, fixtures that talk to each other, fixtures that talk to other systems in your building. There's a very exciting world just around the corner. So I'd leave you with one final thought, and that is, what are lighting controls doing for you? And what can you think that they might do for you in the future? To summarize um, uh, everything between uh, Christian, Matt, and myself, um, I'd simply like to say that we work with the entire supply chain. And we want to work with you. You're the people with the creativity. You're the people with the vision. And you're the people with the knowledge to take our industry to new, fresh, and exciting frontiers. So thank you all very much indeed.